of the Imitation of Christ by Thomas A. Kempis. Book 1 Admonitions Useful for the Spiritual Life Chapter 20 Of the Love of Solitude and Silence Seek a proper time to retire into thyself, and often think over the benefits of God. Let alone curious questions, read such matters as may rather move thee to compunction than give thee occupation. If thou wilt withdraw thyself from superfluous talk and idle visits, as also from giving ear to news and reports, thou wilt find time sufficient and proper to employ thyself in good meditations. The greatest of the saints avoided the company of men as much as they could, and rather chose to serve God in secret. As often as I have been amongst men, said one, I have returned less a man. This we often experience when we talk long. It is easier to be altogether silent than not to speak a word too much. It is easier to keep retired at home than to be able to be sufficiently upon our guard abroad. Whosoever, therefore, strives to attain to inward and spiritual things must, with Jesus, go aside from the crowd. No man safely goes abroad, but he who willingly lies hid at home. No man speaks safely, but he who willingly holds his peace. No man rules safely, but he who is willingly ruled. No man safely commands, but he who has learnt well to obey. No man safely rejoices unless he have within him the testimony of a good conscience. Yet the security of the saints was always full of the fear of God. Neither were they less careful or humble in themselves, because they shone forth with great virtues and grace. But the security of the wicked arises from pride and haughtiness, and in the end turns to their own deception. Never promise thyself security in this life, though thou seemest to be a good religious or a devout hermit. Oftentimes they who were more highly esteemed by men have been in greater danger by reason of their too great confidence, so that for many it is better not to be altogether free from temptations, but to be often assaulted, lest they be too secure, lest perhaps they be lifted up with pride, lest they more wantonly fall back upon outward consolations. Oh, how good a conscience would that man preserve, who would never seek after transitory joy, nor ever busy himself with the world. Oh, if a man would cut away all vain care, and think only of the things of God and his salvation, and place his whole hope in God, what great peace and quiet would he possess. 
No man is worthy of heavenly consolation who has not diligently exercised himself in holy compunction. If thou wouldst find compunction in thy very heart, enter into thy chamber and shut out the tumults of the world, as it is written, be smitten with compunction in your chamber. Thou wilt find in thy cell what thou wilt often lose abroad. Thy cell, if thou continue in it, grows sweet, but if thou keep not to it, it becomes wearisome. If in the beginning of thy conversion thou didst well inhabit and keep thy cell, it will be to thee ever after a dear friend and a most welcome solace. In silence and quiet the devout soul goes forward and learns the hidden things of the scriptures. There she finds floods of tears with which she may wash and cleanse herself every night, that so she may become the more familiar with her Creator, the further she lives from all worldly tumult. For God with the holy angels will draw nigh to him who withdraws himself from his acquaintance and friends. It is better for a man to lie hid and take care of himself than neglecting himself to work miracles. It is praiseworthy for a religious man to go seldom abroad to shun being seen and not even to desire to see men. Why dost thou wish to see what it is not permitted thee to have. The world passeth away, and the desire of it. The desires of sense draw thee to walk abroad, but when the hour is past, what dost thou bring back, save a weight upon thy conscience and a dissipation of heart? A joyous going abroad often brings forth a mournful return, and a late watch spent merrily makes a sad morning. So all carnal joy enters pleasantly, but in the end it bites and kills. What canst thou see elsewhere, which thou seest not here? Behold the heavens and the earth and all the elements for of these are all things made. What canst thou see anywhere which can continue long under the sun? Thou thinkest perhaps to be satisfied, but thou canst not attain to it. If thou couldst see all things at once before thee, what would it be but an empty show? Lift up thine eyes to God on high, and pray for thy sins and negligences. Leave vain things to the vain, but mind thou the things which God has commanded thee. Shut thy door upon thee, and call to thee Jesus thy Beloved. Stay with him in thy cell, for nowhere else wilt thou find so great peace. If thou hadst not gone abroad and heard aught that was said, thou wouldst have kept thyself better in good peace. But since thou takest pleasure sometimes in hearing news, thou must thence suffer disturbance of heart. And that concludes chapter 20 of Book 1 of The Imitation of Christ.